Hello, you're watching Tell It Like It Is with public officials, and my name is Kathy Beck. Now, sitting beside me in this uniform may be a face that's familiar to you. In fact, I have a feeling a lot of people in Bedford know who this is. And this is Chief David Mara, who is chief of the Manchester Police Department. And I particularly asked him to be a guest here because, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that Chief Mara is a resident of Bedford and is very much part of our community. So it seemed kind of neat to have him on and talk about Manchester PD and so on, particularly where there are such close ties to the Bedford PD. And, you know, there's a lot about him that I never knew till I started asking questions, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. Um, he's a 1984 graduate of Northeastern University, uh, where he got his Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. And he later went on, and this I never knew, he later went on to get a law degree from the New England School of Law and is a member of the New Hampshire Bar Association. Now, he began his career with the Manchester Police Department back in 1986 and served as a uniform patrolman for nine years. And he also was on the SWAT team over there for 13 years. And we've all seen enough television shows and such to have a concept of what a SWAT team does. Tough work. After earning his law degree in 1995, he did take a one-year leave from the department to become the prosecutor for the city of Manchester City Solicitor's Office, and then a year later returned back to the police department in 1996, wound up getting promoted to sergeant, and then he served as the police department's prosecutor right through to his promotion to lieutenant in 2001. And then he was promoted to captain in 2003 and served as head of the department's legal unit and the professional standards unit. And in 2008, he became the police chief of the Manchester Police Department. Huge accomplishment. Dave is very active. He's very active here in Bedford um, because he, he and his wife, as I said, live here. And their three kids were involved in various sports activities and such. And now uh, the poor man facing those tuition bills with one kid in law school, one kid in college, and one in high school, and getting ready to go off to college. So, I don't know. I hope they give you overtime pay over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's on the board of directors of the Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce and on the board of directors of the Members First Credit Union and also on the board of directors of the Manchester Police Athletic League, which in itself is um, a big job because they are hugely busy over there with that. So, by, after we do the introduction, thanks so much for being here. I'm glad to be here. Hello, Bedford. Yeah, yeah, I know it. I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't make that connection, you know? No, well, uh, it's, uh, it's a uh, small community, Bedford, so you, yeah. you get to, everybody at least knows everybody by sight once, yeah. you, once, once you have kids and kids are in school. Well, yeah, especially the sports. sports parents. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been in Bedford? I've been here since 91. Oh, okay. Now, where, where are you native of? I never uh, asked you that. Originally from Massachusetts. Get out. Me too. What part of Mass were you from? I started out in Chelsea and lived a lot of places uh, yeah. in between and moved up to Manchester yeah. and then moved to Bedford. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, Chelsea, you know, you started out in the right place to wind up coming up to Manchester. You know, kind of, there's some similarities between the cities. Uh, some, yes. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Although yeah. I think Chelsea might be crazier. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you're you're the um, the head of a big department, two hundred and twenty seven people. I mean that is that has to be the biggest in the state, isn't it? Uh, state police has over two hundred, but the municipality. Municipality, we are, we yeah. Are oh yeah, you've got to so, be. And the yeah. po what's the population now in Manchester? Uh, the last census was uh, one hundred eight thousand. Wow. Yeah, and that's probably down from years ago, right? Because when all the mills were in full tilt boogie, all the cities were a little bigger. We're starting to tick up. I I believe uh, it's probably it's probably a little higher. Yeah. Than, than that. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I suppose it would be. Yeah. Because there's during, so much happening over there. Then during the daytime, we get a lot more people coming into work. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. Again. Oh yeah. Cause it has Which to go case. by the thousands. Yeah. So. Because I know even Chief Perfonsky here in Bedford, um, I, he said that in daytime population. It bumps up to about 50,000, and gosh, Bedford doesn't have anywhere near the number of businesses and office buildings and so on that Manchester does. No. So you, you must really get loaded. Oh, yeah, yeah. It gets uh, gets pretty busy. Manchester's a busy place. Uh, yeah, Great yeah. Great place to go. It has a lot of uh, things that people want. And, uh, yes. Work, services. Yes. Stores, restaurants. Yes, yes. So and and even things. downtown. I mean, it's changed so much in the past few years. You know, there are so many things, so many restaurants. 
uh, obviously the uh, marina has been huge yeah, the, the uh, in marina, terms of bringing the, people into town. I mean, huge. The baseball park, what a change. Yes. The transformation you've seen from the 90s yes. to now. Yes. The downtown is, is vibrant. Yes. A lot of things going on down there. And what's nice, too, is, you know, I mean, you, you have kids, so you know what it's like. You know, you know, when you want to take the kids into a Bruins game or a Red Sox game or whatever, it's expensive. Expensive, and it's a little bit of a drag. Yes, so. yeah. And, I mean, no. you can't get cheap tickets. And, you know, when you're bringing the kids in, and I, I, last I heard, like, a little thing of soda was, like, six bucks or something, yep. which is yep. crazy. So, I mean, a family of four, you're going to drop a minimum of a couple hundred dollars. You can dollars. see some good baseball at uh, Fisher Cat Exactly. And you can see at... Uh, Verizon Center, some exactly. very good hockey. Exactly. I know, and the kids seem to love so, it. No, and they seem nice. to be doing a lot of things for the kids, you know, with the with the mascots and all the different events they run and everything. And plus, before and after games, you have the restaurants, you have uh, yeah. bars. It's a, it's a yeah. great place to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We've gone over there. I can't tell you how many times for different events, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But, of course, it also puts uh, some burden on your guys because... Tons of people pouring in all at once. Obviously, it affects traffic and every other thing. So yeah, but we uh, we're used to it. That's what we. I know. Are, so. I am very efficient, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I know one of the things that you're well known for, uh, as is the you know the Manchester PD, is community policing. So you know, are there new programs that are always kind of getting going over there? Or? Community policing is. Um, it's just a new way of saying what the old neighborhood police officer was. Mm -hmm. Years ago, uh, before our lives got busier, before we had two income families, to, and when life was a little slower for everybody, mm -hmm. used to have the neighborhood police officers. Yeah. Everybody knew the neighborhood uh, That's true. Uh, cop. And yeah. uh, they knew everything that was going on in the neighborhood. They, they could address concerns before they became problems. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to get back to. Um, what we try to do is we try to uh, connect with... Uh, all segments of the population. Mm -hmm. Manchester is a very unique place in uh, New Hampshire. Demographic-wise, uh, population-wise, we've already yes. talked about. Yeah. Um, so we, we do policing. We, it's by necess necessity that we have to uh, be a community policing police department. Mm -hmm. We have uh, in the, the school, the Manchester school system, it's over 70 languages are spoken. So, I was just about to ask you that because I, I knew it was a very high number. And it's uh, it's it can be a challenge for uh, law yeah. enforcement to, oh, yeah. to, to do that, uh, to be able to effectively police yeah. uh, a population where we have all kinds of different dialects, yeah. from different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, people come from all over the world. Different customs, <clears throat> all kinds of things. Exactly. So, But one thing I've really learned about Manchester community meetings, interacting all over the course of my career mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and now is that if you go to any community meeting where you have people from all over the world, mm -hmm. you ask them, you ask uh, everybody, uh, what is the most important thing to you? What do they tell you? The, their kids, their children. Yeah. That's what we all have in common. Yeah. People want to, to, the kids to be safe, they want mm -hmm. to feel safe mm -hmm. and that is what, that is the job of a police department mm -hmm. is, a, is to provide a quality of life, a good quality of life, mm -hmm. along with other city departments for the citizens mm -hmm. of, of, of the city or town that you live in. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. That's what we try to do. And you've got your challenges because obviously there are very densely packed areas it's, uh, it's, and such, yeah. you know, that, that, often, that certainly would have different problems, for instance, than Bedford would, where everybody's sitting on their one acre or whatever. I mean, you've got a lot of people in, in some congested neighborhoods and it's a different it, certainly it, that brings challenges it, it certainly does it's it's a different type of policing it's mm. just like uh, Hampton mm -hmm. they have different challenges mm -hmm. we are in the summertime mm -hmm. so oh yeah every every place has different you know, mm -hmm. a, a small town has different challenges and it, it's it all depends upon what 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 is going on mm -hmm. in that given town or city mm -hmm. so and that's how you adapt the, the way you do policing but everything is it doesn't matter where you work. A police officer is a police officer. They face mm -hmm. the same dangers. Oh yeah. They, uh, you have to make sure, no matter where you work, your police officers are trained and they're yep. ready for anything. Yeah, and that's. And and we've and seen we, that in Bedford. We've we seen that it in everywhere. Manchester. Yeah. And so just in the past, uh, I, I emailed Chief Perfonsky this morning, and I said I just got done reading uh, two situations um, in Santa Cruz yesterday. Two officers that's were right. killed, and that was investigating, I think, some kind of little domestic, domestic thing. And yesterday in um, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, an officer was shot in the head, and I guess he's he's alive, but not expected to to make it through. 
And in all cases, you know, young offices with sterling careers, young families, and I mean, it's happening everywhere. It's, it's, we're not unique. No, it's, no, it's frightening. It, it is, it is. Uh, we've been pretty lucky in, in New Hampshire uh, compared to the rest of the, the country, but it's mm -hmm. over the years, uh, mm -hmm. periodically, it, it does happen here as well. I think it's kind of that whole breakdown of, of I mean, certainly there's been a breakdown in some society rules in the, you know, the past few years, and we're seeing it. Yeah, the world is uh, definitely a different place. It than, sure is. Than, uh, Twenty years ago, or thirty years ago. It sure is. So. Well, what what do you think is the like the the most important part of community policing? Is there one thing that kind of you really focus on more than another? What? Let me let me explain to you what we do. And what we our plan was with the when we uh, enhanced our community policing effort. We uh, about five years ago we restructured uh, our police department. Mm -hmm. We made, community policing used to be part of another division, patrol. We made it its own division. And oh. what their goal is, and what they, they do, is we put a community police officer in areas of the city, mm -hmm. different areas, one, one police officer, they are assigned the. An and that's area. kind of a permanent assignment? Yes. What they okay. do is they don't go answer calls. They mm -hmm. will answer them, but they're not dispatched right. the right. calls. Patrol does right. that. What they do is that they, they go out there and they meet the people in that neighborhood, they get involved in that neighborhood, and they're able to identify what is going on mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So if this is a problem that's happening, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, say there's a, a house and they're selling drugs out of that house, mm -hmm. or there's a house and there's a loud party. What happens when a police car drives up? Mm -hmm. A police car is dispatched there. Right. Of course, people doing illegal activity are going to stop, mm -hmm. and they're not going to do it while the police officer is yeah. there. So the yeah. police officer checks it. It's quiet. That police officer now has to go on to his next call, mm -hmm. especially on our 4 to 12 shift. It gets pretty busy. Oh, yes, I'm sure it does. So what we do is a community police officer, he identifies a problem address, and what he'll do is he can either see if he can handle it himself or he'll, he'll get help from the other divisions. Well, maybe he'll call street crime. Mm -hmm. Street crime will come in with an unmarked car. They'll be, uh, dressed, uh, uh, they'll be dressed in plain clothes, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to stop and watch what's going on at that address, and then they'll be able to take action. Mm -hmm. And what it'll do is uh, they'll be able to shut down that address as far as us right. getting dispatched right. there. Right. And not only is that good for the community, not only is that good for that neighborhood, but what, if we can do that to enough addresses, mm -hmm. we're going to cut down the patrols calls mm -hmm. for services. Mm -hmm. And if we get enough community police officers doing that throughout the city, we cut, out, we cut down the amount of calls that police officers are mm -hmm. going to in patrol. They can slow down, and now they can interact. Mm -hmm. with the, yeah. They yeah. can be more of a deterrent. Because a lot of times, our patrol guys <coughs> are going from call to call to call. They don't oh, have yeah, they can the, get frantic. Yeah. And they don't have that time to yeah. make that connection. We try to keep our police officers on the same route mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. So... There's not always a new the face. familiarity, yeah. So yeah, that counts for a lot. So we do. We we've tried some different things, and we've been we've had some success. I'm very proud to say that uh, the uh, my community policing uh, division, the, the officers in it, just won a uh, community policing award for the New England Chiefs of Police Association. Nice. So I was very proud of them. Yes. For the work they put in. Yes. And uh, we do different things. Like uh, one thing that we wanted to do is some people are reluctant to call up the police. Um, they might be reluctant uh, because, hey, I don't know if they might say, I don't know if this is something I really should call the police on. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, they're just going to, why should I call the police? It'll take them a while to get here or they're not going to mm -hmm. come for this. So what we did is we gave our community police officers cell phones. And oh. we, we listed the numbers. So now oh, if yeah. pe people, and we put their, we put their uh, faces yeah. on pictures yeah. of our community police officer on, on our website. So now people could put a face with a name, and mm -hmm. they they have this cell phone. They can call them That's up. That's a good idea. And now if they have an issue, they can say, "Hey, yeah. I'm, yeah, I was wondering about this. What can you yeah. tell me about this?" Yeah. The officers, when they're off duty, of course, are not going to answer the phone, but you mm -hmm. leave a message. And sure. And, and we also do that with our school resource officers. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, school resource uh, officers at all our high schools mm -hmm. as well as our junior high schools. So oh, they are at all of them. Oh. Yes. And that, that's very important. That can that's, make a huge difference. With, without a doubt. Because, I mean, they, they can really be in, in the neighborhoods or in the schools. I mean, they're the eyes and ears that are they're kind of taking everything in and, well, you know, can identify what's happening and who's who in the zoo, so to speak. Well, it's a, a school. Each school is its own little community yes. itself. It has its yes. own culture. Yes. It has its own, um, its own way, of, yeah. uh, way of things. And uh, the, the police officer becomes part of that. Yeah. And a lot of times you'll see some of our community, um, excuse me, our school resource officers, they are the only uh, adult figure that, uh, of authority that they see, mm -hmm. uh, and, they, and they, they can become a resource for a lot of kids. A lot of kids, I'm sure. role model kids, 
might not have anybody at mm -hmm. home to mm -hmm. talk to, mm -hmm. so they can fill that role at least mm -hmm. while they're at school as well. And I mean, it's always a good idea for a kid to see, uh, you know, to, to have the concept the police are there to help. You know, not that the police are there because you're in trouble. That's, that's exactly right, and uh, that, that's another thing that we're, we're trying to change. What we do is once a year, we pull out all the stops, we'll go to each elementary school, we'll bring our SWAT uh, uh, van, mm -hmm. we'll bring our crime kids scene love van, that. we'll bring our mounted unit, our motorcycles. Oh yeah, they love we, that. Uh, we, bring a, we do a canine demonstration. Yeah. And oh, what it's good about it is it. the kids get to see the police yes. and interact. Yes. And now we've done it for two years now and the kids look forward to it. I yeah. bet they do. So if you think about it, we, we, we try to send a positive message to the kids. Mm -hmm. At least that once a year we send that positive message. And if you if kid starts at a young you know young girl or boy, they start in kindergarten or mm -hmm. first grade. We mm -hmm. get to at least do that for five five or six years in a row, mm -hmm. where we get our message out like that. And That's great. And it's great to see uh, it's great to see them ask questions and the R rise. Yeah. And oh and yeah. And I mean, so. some kids need that too because they may not be getting the right kind of guidance at home, frankly. Um, so that you know, for them to understand, the police are there to help them. Who knows? what that will turn into in a future year. You know, if, if the kid is aware of something or scared about something or whatever, they're not going to be afraid to approach office and so-and-so. So. It's a familiar face to them. That's right, and uh, community policing isn't just about, policing itself isn't just about arresting people. No, I know. Community policing, like, we, we, uh, we meet with a lot of uh, community groups. Mm -hmm. We uh, hold the meetings at our police department. We go to, to uh, their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And what we have found is that it's a learning process for us. Yeah. We get to learn about the people that we please. That's true. Yeah. And it's the best. I yeah. mean, w they get to learn about us. Before you know it, we become familiar mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. We feel more comfortable with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way to police the community. Mm -hmm. That we all, it, people need to feel it as though it is their police department. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's the goal of community policing. And that's a big and change from years ago, really. It, it is because... It, it is because, like I said, society has changed. We're, yeah. It's, it's things are so fast now. Yeah. As I said before, yeah. most, most households, two-income families, two-income earners, yeah. so they're not at home. Yeah. Lifestyle's that, different. Lifestyle, the kids, the kids, it's, everything's much more rushed. The, mm -hmm. the nuclear family, it's, it's not the same mm -hmm. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not the same as when we were growing up, certainly. That's right. You know, so. that every night supper was at 5 o'clock or whatever, and you bloody well better be there. Well, right. <laughs> or mom or dad would be all looking for you or whatever, lights, you know. Street lights go on. You, <laughs> you are home. So. Yeah, yeah. But the... Um, big big differences. Other things that we, uh, we try to do, we have a... We, twice, a twice a year we have a uh, Citizens Police Academy. We are once a week uh, for uh, a couple of months. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and they'll... And they'll come into the police station, and somebody from a different division in our police department will mm -hmm. uh, will have a class. Neat. And they get to learn people that go. Are those well attended? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very popular. Very, yep. Very. Uh, very well. We'll do. We'll do things like we'll do a uh, we do safety clinics. Mm -hmm. If uh, if somebody's house gets burglarized, or if anybody doesn't matter, uh, we, we'll contact them. But if somebody wants uh, a police officer to come to their house and do a security survey. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. We do that really? for businesses. So this that's neat. Th so our community police division is is very very busy. Yeah. And uh, we have. They uh, they probably spend most of their time doing outreach. Mm -hmm. Now our patrol division. Mm -hmm. We have we have 227 uh, approved. That's our approved complement. By the end of next month, we'll have 220 police officers. Uh, once I hire uh, seven more. Mm -hmm. So, but our, our biggest division is patrol. Those are the men and women that go out there, and they're, they're the ones that go t initially to the call. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that have yeah, to face yeah, the, the initial danger. True. And, uh, and they never know what they're going into. But they're also the people, a, a police officer um, has such an impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. We're in a, I'm not talking about long term. Mm -hmm. No, I know but that. No, a police officer, when a police officer goes to answer a call, it, people are looking for something. They're looking yes, for they help. Are. Sometimes there's nowhere else to turn. So how that police officer treats them, how that police officer uh, interacts with them is mm -hmm. very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, just saying hello to a person. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there that elderly people, uh, mentally ill people, mm -hmm. nobody talks to them. Mm -hmm. So j just to have uh, yeah. some human contact, yeah. to have a police officer say hi hello to them is a big, means a lot. It's a big deal. Yeah. It, it said, hey, there is somebody out there. Well, right? look how so. that country reacted to that situation back, I don't know, a few weeks ago in New York City. 
and uh, the, the, I guess he was some kind of a derelict, but who was sitting on a sidewalk on a freezing cold night with no shoes. And one of the young officers who was on duty who patrols that neighborhood apparently went into a nearby shoe store with his own money and bought him some heavy socks and boots. And there were out-of-towners, you know, tourists, and they saw the, the police officer going to this kind of sorry-looking guy sitting on the ground. And, you know, out come the telephone, you know, cameras because they think they're going to see something very dramatic and they, they think that the guy's getting busted or something, you know. And they kind of recorded the whole thing and then they see the, the cop come back and get down on his knees on the sidewalk and trying to pull the heavy socks onto the guy and the shoes and everything. And they were like flabbergasted. Hmm. Well, they put it on YouTube and it got like millions of views and made it onto all the network That's... news and everything else. And, you know, somebody obviously, some reporter caught up with the cop, a young cop. Um, he did. He dug into his own Dad. pocket because he was like, I have two pair of shoes on and my police boots and my feet are freezing tonight. And I saw that guy and it was like, I couldn't keep walking by him. You yeah. know, and I mean, that was that, that one picture that made all the newspapers. It was worth five million words. And, Pol and you know, police officers do that and they don't do it for attention. No. They, they do it because that's, that's the way they that's made right. it. That's right. That's right. I can tell you a story, and I'm not bragging about it. It's just that you brought it up. But mm -hmm. I, I can tell you a story, and he didn't do it for attention. Uh, I wouldn't have known about it unless somebody else told me. Mm -hmm. um, I, police officers go. They see, a, uh, they see a person on the ground. They, mm -hmm. And at first they think, hey, maybe it's a drunk person. Mm -hmm. Make a long story short, it was a handicapped person. Uh -oh. So what they do is they help him. Yeah. They uh, learn that... Uh, that he's disabled. Mm -hmm. And this police officer, my police officer, Officer Feliciano, on his own time, he goes and he uh, arranges and he has his son help him, gets him an uh, electric uh, wheelchair. Oh. And then wow. does, isn't asked to do well, that. Yeah. He did it off duty yeah, and it. he did. So that's the type of people. Yeah. And, and Bedford has yeah. the same type of people. I know they do. So. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, the, the part of the job is you have to have that stern demeanor. You know, you, you you have to. I mean, you have to exude some authority and so on. And I think people see that and, you know, kind of forget that there's a human under there. And, uh, you know, another story, That's... that anecdotal story that comes to mind is, and you, you may remember this, uh, I'm going to say it was like maybe eight or ten years ago in Salem, Mass. And there was a, a little boy. He was, I don't know, nine or ten years old. You know, a tough age. And the police were called to come to school because some parent had accused him of stealing some things at their home. He had been, you know, at the house visiting their child and they noticed some things missing and it wasn't like valuable stuff, it was clothing. But the mother was all bent out of shape and she wanted the police involved. And when the police, you know, went down there, I mean, there's this scared little kid. And I mean, I guess he was just a kind of skinny, rendy, little scared looking kid in a very, very bad home situation. You know, there was no dad, and the mother was, I don't know, maybe not doing all the things she should have, you know, and there were a lot of kids and no money. And when the cops got there and saw this kid and found out that it was because he had, he had stolen a couple of pieces of clothing from this other kid's house, here's this little boy at that age, and he had on girls' shoes and girls' socks and, and so on, because that's all it was for him to wear, you know? And I mean, I guess it was very heartbreaking to, to everybody who was involved. And when the news got back to the station, they were all like, oh my God. I mean, for no, if nothing else, how humiliating it would have been for the little boy, you know, because he was being made fun of showing up with patent leather girls' yeah. shoes on and such. And I guess all the guys on their own took up a collection and went and bought wardrobes for not only him, but every kid in the family. Oh, that's very you know? nice. Yeah. And, yeah. Very and I mean, nice. it was one of those kind of stories that, hey, they could have just walked away from it. They all have their own families and problems to deal with. And, you know, people don't realize that stuff goes on all the time. No, no. But uh, to, be a, to be a police officer these days, and at, at any time, I, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot different than, than when I started. But we expect our police officers, they have to have a working knowledge of the law that's uh, more extensive yeah. th than an attorney. Yeah. They, they make decisions very quickly. Yes. They're an attorney, yes. prosecutor, defense attorney, judge, they, they then will 
they didn't have the time to review what that officer did. Mm -hmm. A lot of times officers have to use their training and they have to react quickly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes somebody's life might be depending on it or, or yep. if they don't take action, somebody is going to get away with something yep. or some, or there's a myriad of uh, circumstances. But what to pick a police officer, to, to get a police officer, it, it's, a, it's a long process because mm -hmm. the, the amount of responsibility that our young officers, when they first start, that they have, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's massive uh, to, to think that they have, under the law, under certain circumstances, uh, they, they have the um, uh, right or the ability to, to take somebody's life or mm -hmm. they, have, they make decisions that will drastically affect people's mm -hmm. life. So to become a police officer, you, you have to go through a process, mm -hmm. a rigorous process. Yes, I know. And uh, you, in, in Manchester, uh, you, you start out with the physical agility test. Mm -hmm. Then you do a, uh, excuse me, a written test. You mm -hmm. pass that, you do the physical mm -hmm. agility test. Then you do an oral interview. Then after that, you go to a one-on-one -on -one interview. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Psychological testing and everything, Written, right? yeah. in-person, medical test. Uh, then you hit polygraph. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, you... Uh, if you do get the job, mm -hmm. you go to an in-house academy in Manchester. We mm -hmm. have a the state. All police officers have to go to the state academy yes. by law. Yeah. it's a very good academy. What they offer mm -hmm. there is, is is fantastic. They do a great job up there. Manchester, we send. We also have an in-house academy only because, as I said, Manchester is a little different than the rest mm -hmm. of the state. So we want to make sure that we provide our officers a, a, a enough training mm -hmm. to deal what goes on in Manchester. Mm -hmm. So they will go to the, our in-house academy. Then after that, they'll go to the state academy. Then they'll come back and they'll be on field training uh, with a field training officer. So it takes six months from start to finish before you, uh, you'll hit the street. Then yeah. you're on a year probation. Yeah, that's so, true, too. Yeah. So it, it, it is a rigorous process. Um, what, has, what I've found uh, the last uh, five to ten years, a lot of, it, we don't have as many people wanting to be police officers. In the ones that do, the qualified candidates, it's, it's not what it used to be. I went to Memorial High School in 1986 to take uh, the, the Manchester police test, and mm -hmm. uh, there were 300 people there. Really? That yes, many? Yes, three. Wow. So, and now it's, it's in, in across the board, across the country, uh, where everybody's finding that, that out to find qualified candidates, people that want to uh, be police officers. So, mm -hmm. and that can get through that process that I just... Uh, and I mean, let's face it, the job is more dangerous now, too, than it was years ago. It, it, it is, but uh, I, I don't know if it's just this generation, uh, the, the interest in, in that sort of thing is, mm -hmm. is uh, waned, and maybe it's just a, you know, a, a thing that's on a cycle where yeah, maybe 10 know. years from now yeah. it'll, be, it'll be different. Yeah, yeah because so. people, I mean, yeah, people who were interested, it was always a, a, a game of waiting to see if you could possibly get appointed. And, and, you know, people waited sometimes for a long time to get appointed. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Now... Just from like when you started, you started back in the 80s and to now, do you see like a, a huge difference in what the crimes of the 80s that were the big problems were as opposed to, you know, what are the big problems today? I mean, it would almost seem as though the problems, if nothing else, are more complicated today than they were then. Well, in the late 80s, early 90s, what had happened is drugs yeah, we went from yeah. f mostly powder cocaine and and uh, heroin mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature, and then crack came, mm -hmm. and that uh, changed that's scary stuff. Yeah. And that that changed the game. Yeah, it sure did. And but then things during the nineties, it was pretty rough uh, w with that, uh, and it got it got better. Mm -hmm. But now the biggest problem that I think uh, police departments and communities are facing is it's it's rampant is the uh, addiction to prescription drugs. Mm. Because people, mm -hmm. what, what we're finding is uh, a burglary rate shot up. So we, I look at our, uh, we're number dr numbers driven. Mm -hmm. With resources, we mm -hmm. want to make sure we do direct our resources where they're needed. So we have mm -hmm. to look, we have to take a good look at the crime that's happening in Manchester. Mm -hmm. And course. then direct our resources the, yeah. the best way we can. So we, you know, I get weekly crime stats. And last, uh, last year I started seeing the burglary rate. It just shot up in January. It mm -hmm. went up, it went from like 50 uh, in that month to 90, and uh, then the next month again it went up. So I knew it wasn't an anomaly. We started now, is this really. this all kind of drug related? We started taking a good look at that, and uh, what it was is it's, it's drug related, and the vast majority of those crimes were people that were addicted to drugs, and it starts off at least as prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. People are less inclined to say, hey, here's some heroin, try this. Yeah. They're not going to shoot yeah. them, shoot yeah. a needle. 
but yeah. they're at a party and some hey try this pill yeah and and, and I understand it's getting younger and younger too it, it is and what happens is people it's very addictive people get addicted and uh, it's very expensive it's for rule, <laughs> of, for sure. rule of thumb yeah. it's uh, for oxycon it's like a dollar a milligram so to to, to keep that habit going, it's expensive. Now it's actually yeah. cheaper for people to buy heroin. So Amazing, huh? And yeah. once you're addicted, shooting yeah. that needle into your arm yeah. is not such a yeah. it's not such a big deal. So what we're finding is people are are, are committing crimes where um, we changed the way we did things. So it looked like burglaries were going to really go up, mm -hmm. and we were lucky. That still we still uh, are not where we want to be. We don't. We have way too many burglaries in Manchester, mm -hmm. but burglaries went down last year. That did because yeah. we got a grip. Uh, we got a grip. Uh, we changed the way we did things mm -hmm. and, and adapted. And that's what police work is. You have to adapt. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did different things such as uh, our pawn shops. We. Uh, oh yeah, that made a lot of news on the paper when you got that kind of thing going. Well, because now they have to cooperate a whole lot more, well, don't they, it, than they it, used to? And report they have to more? enter. Somebody sells something at a pawn shop. They have to enter it into a computer. Okay. It goes to our database. So now, if I, if a police officer goes to a address, mm -hmm. they get a serial number. They type mm -hmm. it into our computer system. It'll pop up if it was sold at a pawn ah, shop or somewhere. Okay. So it really is really helped. We've had a lot of arrests doing that. That has, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's it. I, I really believe that had a lot to do. You know, a, a significant amount to do with bringing the burglary rate down and getting a little bit of a grip on it. So that's what we're going to try to continue those efforts. Now, so, did they fight that, or did they all go along with it? Uh, some people, uh, some people thought it would be. Uh, you know, a very cumbersome mm. thing for their business, but I think yeah. they're finding it isn't. I, I mean, so. I would think it would make them feel safer too. Well, they comply with the law. They they enter the things in like they're supposed to do, and it it it, it shields them from uh, being mm -hmm. charged with something. Mm -hmm. So now, just by virtue, of, you know, Bedford obviously is a suburb of Manchester. Manchester's bigger, so obviously Manchester's crime statistics will be higher. I mean, that that's a given. We all know that. Do you think that that problems in Manchester have drifted much into the towns, or do you think the towns just have plenty of their own trouble going on that has nothing to do with Manchester? No, I think it's not just uh, criminals don't have borders. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So Bedford, we work uh, closely with Bedford on a lot of mm -hmm. on, on, a, on a lot of things, mm -hmm. and uh, we I I have a lot of respect for the Bedford police uh, as a resident and mm -hmm. as a police officer. Uh, there's some outstanding. Yeah, you'd be one of their. Uh, biggest, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for, one of their biggest watches, for goodness sakes, because you're the chief of the city, so. Oh, I'm very you know, impressed. You'd, you'd be very, very aware of what they're doing and not doing here. Yeah. I've interacted with uh, people yeah. from the top all the way, and I'm, I'm very impressed with Bedford Police. Yeah. I feel, as yeah, a resident, good job. Yeah. as a resident, I feel, uh, I feel very comfortable mm -hmm. uh, having them uh, protecting my family, so. But uh, getting back to, um, getting back to uh, crime in Manchester, mm -hmm. in Bedford, if we work collaboratively and we 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 uh, share information, mm -hmm. if I if 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 a Manchester police officer uh, arrests somebody in Manchester, that's one uh, that that person could have been committing crimes in Bedford, mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. So the more we work together, the more we get people true. off the criminals off the street. Yeah, the safer true. both communities are. True. And, it, and we, if if and it's a great way to pool our resources. Because I think I think if I'm not mistaken, Bedford had a little bump too. And burglaries there for a while. I think uh, throughout the state that was yeah. happening. Yeah, and if, I think if yeah. you talk to uh, yeah, it's, it certainly wasn't in an isolated uh, situation. Twenty one community. You talk to the Bedford chief, he, he John. He'll 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 talk to you about prescription mm -hmm. drugs. Mm -hmm. I have this conversation constantly with uh, Colonel Quinn of the State Police. Mm -hmm. He's uh, total agreement. That's that's what he, his troopers are finding as and well. And if I'm not mistaken, he worked undercover drugs, did he not? He for many years. Yes, yes I thought did. so. In fact, yep. I think he worked with one of my, my son. Okay. Yeah, I think they worked together on a few different cases, because my son's in Massachusetts, of course, you know. Yeah. But yeah, they had they had interactions. Yeah, amazing, huh? Small world. Well, we uh, <coughs> excuse me. We work, and Bedford Police does the same thing. We work with the federal agencies, mm -hmm. we, the mm -hmm. DEA, the FBI. Uh, uh, tobacco firearms, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol, tobacco and firearms, uh, the marshals, uh, federal probation. Yeah, there's not that rivalry like there used to be years ago, is there? There, there isn't. I think a lot had to do with after 9/11. Uh, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, 
the culture of police department yeah, is different people now. working now in well, teams, yeah. And if you think about it, you have all these federal agencies with all these resources. They want to help. Mm -hmm. They want to work with us. Mm -hmm. And so with the, with the shortage of resources for municipalities, mm -hmm. you have these federal agencies bringing the resources in. Sure. So as, as far as I'm concerned, not to take them, yeah. Anybody who wants to come yeah. in and make arrest a bad person in yeah. Manchester, more power to you. Yeah, so, absolutely. So yeah, but years ago there used to be those little quirky it was. rivalries. It was, you know, yes. yeah, even between the state and the local oh. sometimes. And well, we certainly saw that in Massachusetts a lot. You it know. was the same around here. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that was always going on. Now you, I know you were like mega busy because when I was trying to reach you. Um, you, you were kind of like going a thousand miles an hour because in addition to all the normal stuff, the police department has a new building in Manchester. That's right. We moved from Chestnut Street to Valley Street. Yes. Yeah. That's a so, nice, I mean, I haven't taught it, but I've seen it. It's quite a facility. No, nope, We're very, uh, very happy and grateful for that. Uh, uh, the men and women were working in a very small, confined area. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah, um, the old station was small for a department your size. Oh, well, we had detectives here in Desks, phones, yeah. computers. Yeah. yeah. We went from roughly 36,000 usable square feet at Chestnut Street mm -hmm. to our new facility. Uh, we have um, uh, between 72,000 and 73,000. Wow. So we nice. doubled our square footage. Nice. And uh, we wanted to make it a training facility. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of room. I was just going to say that must give you a lot more room for classes mm -hmm. and in-service training. It's and very. Uh, it's a beautiful building. We have a 10 uh, a 10 lane range. Mm, shooting range. Nice. Downstairs. Oh, that's great. We have uh, classrooms. We have a community room. Yeah. And uh, that's great. What we're trying to do is attract community groups. Come in, do your heavy community meetings. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting mm -hmm. back to community police. And this is your mm -hmm. police department. Mm -hmm. This is the more contact we can have together, uh, mm -hmm. the better it is for the community. I would think too that the safety issues, like just you know transferring prisoners and sally ports and so on, have to be way better at the new place. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. It's a lot safer place for everybody. Yeah, because you were really in a congested area That's correct, before yeah. downtown. Now you've got a little more space around you, and that you are, you're able to see your perimeters better too, aren't you, from your new location? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a all all around. It's a very yeah. well designed, very very good place. Now, did you participate in the design? From already? start to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. that had to be a good experience. Oh, it was uh, it was it was great. They'll be, you know, using you as a consultant. Police well, departments all over the state. They'll be seeing come on over and show us how to build. I them. did a lot of research be, while we were going through before we started the whole process. I visited a lot of, talked to a lot of different police departments that had new, newer buildings. Visited yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, and find uh, out what was good and what was bad. The whole I, bit. I actually can tell you, I assigned a captain, Captain Fred Roach, mm -hmm. to the project. Really? He could go work for Harvey Construction. He knows everything <laughs> there is about construction. No kidding. Oh, it's amazing. He did a fantastic job. Yeah. I would make decisions, but they'd be informed decisions based on uh, uh, Harvey, uh, the people that Harvey had, yeah. as well as uh, his uh, advice. So, but he uh, he did a fantastic job. Yeah, I bet that must have uh, had a lot to do with improved communication systems and such for you too. Yeah, technology-wise, right. yeah. it's a yeah. it's a state-of-the-art police department. We're very happy with it. You're getting a lot of requests for tours from other departments. I have uh, given. Not just departments, community, everybody. I've yeah. given literally a hundred tours. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, we so. should come up with some day. Follow you around over there, and oh. you can show us everything. That'd be fun. Anytime. So. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Wow. Um, you know, you have been chief for a while, and one of the darkest days since you've been chief, or probably one of the darkest days since you've been a cop, had to be with Michael Briggs. I, that happened in 2006. I became chief in 2008. However, it was a uh, it was a dark day for Manchester as a whole. Oh my God, yes. It was. Yeah, that yeah, was I, incredible. He's a he's a great young man. You know, it was a, you know tragedy. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine that the the whole imprint of that situation still has to weigh on everybody over there. Oh, without a doubt. And then you had Dan Doherty. Dan Doherty. Okay. Um, he's a. Uh, Thank God. When, when we talk about training, we're talking yeah. about. Um, how you hire people, mm -hmm. you, you know, how you have to be mm -hmm. careful. And mm -hmm. he is uh, a testament to courage. So if you think about, if you think about it, he, um, for, th for that young man, he gets, he gets shot. He, as he's yeah. falling down, he's still able to get his weapon out. He's still able to return fire. I don't know um, how. Didn't he have seven bullets on him? I, I yeah, can't even it, imagine how he, how he had the presence in mind. Well, it's, it, it told, <coughs> taught me a lot about my police department. That, and things I already knew, but it just mm -hmm. reinforced it. You have Dan Doherty showing that courage. Here he is. He leaves the east side, goes to the west mm -hmm. side to back up his officers. So somebody mm -hmm. 
with a gun. Mm -hmm. He goes over there. He gets shot. He fends him off. He saves his own life. The, 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 the person runs away. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens next is officers come on the scene. They save his life. They apply a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, the work they did was incredible. Yeah. Then after that, the officers got together mm -hmm. and they uh, were able to hunt this person down before he could Thank cause more harm. Yeah. And while he is trying to get away, he's trying to uh, rob a, pulls a gun still at a, um, a uh, neighbor, neighborhood resident. Yes, yeah, in her car, right? Yep. So the officers, they did a great job, regardless, disregarding their own safety. They, uh, they catch him, and then the investigation after that. Mm. It's, it was just an incredible work by, by everybody involved. So oh, I couldn't be prouder. Yeah. So, but getting back to Dan, uh, here's a person that uh, just, just to see him, he's back out in the street now. I heard. Yeah, yeah, I so heard he was back. If, That's uh, incredible. I mean, that wasn't even a year ago. It's hard work that did it for him. It's just he, he would not be denied. He kept on telling everybody, I'm going to be back, I'm going to be back. You know, you, you, people, people would just see the condition of him. Mm. It, it, people could, probably couldn't help to doubt him. But mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. talking to him and seeing the look in his eyes, I didn't doubt it. And uh, it's a testament to him. He, uh, he came back, worked hard, and he's uh, back out in the street. Wow. So. Cause that, what, what month was that? It wasn't even a year that ago. Was, uh, well, it was back in uh, March, last March. So just so coming just, on to the anniversary. Yes. And he's back on the job already. I mean, it's, it's staggering. Yep. And Staggered. what's good, out of something, a near tragedy and a tragedy of uh, what happened with Michael Briggs mm -hmm. is the community, it reinforces that the vast majority of the community support the police department. The, in Manchester. That certainly seemed it, to come out. And that's, yeah. that is the good thing. Yeah. The support from the, from the community. Yeah. And it, it, it was just wonderful with, with, with Michael as well mm -hmm. as with, uh, with David. Well, it didn't, so, I mean, it seemed to generate a whole bunch of new neighborhood watch programs and all kinds of things like that. I mean, especially, you know, over in that area where, where Officer Briggs was, was killed. I mean, I guess that was one of the trouble spot areas in town. And apparently yeah. a lot of good people came forth and said, you know what, we can't let this continue, right? Well, well the people that, the people that did these things, the people that, that the, the person that shot mm -hmm. Michael Briggs, the person mm -hmm. that shot the Andardi, they weren't from those neighborhoods. No, I know. The people that live in those neighborhoods, yeah. they're, they're good people. Yeah. They're just like you and me. Yeah. They want the same things. Yeah. So people come in the neighborhood and it, it kind of tarnishes mm -hmm. of they, course it the, does. The, yeah. them. Of they course were, it they does. were appalled. They were, they were uh, angry that that happened in their neighborhood. And they all rallied together behind the police. Yeah, station. it certainly seemed that way. So, I mean, yes. just from reading the papers, it seemed as though people just had a total outpouring of, of help and support as much as they could. Oh yes, it was it was it was very good, very good to see, very very nice. So, would you almost say that the worst part of the job, which would have been those incidences, in some ways also was the best part of the job when I, you saw how people reacted? I would just say, I would just say the public's reaction was. The, the, the end was a good thing, mm -hmm. but you never this the sacrifice for instance uh, Michael Briggs oh, uh, God, I his know. family I know. they'll be making that sacrifice the I rest know. of their lives. How old are his boys now? Uh, they're um, just about teenagers, both mm -hmm. of them. So yeah, that that, that just that, that blew everybody's mind. Yeah, it blew everybody's mind. But but again, um, you, you know you saw the good side of people coming out through all that too. The one thing I'm glad of is that the perpetrators of all this are away for a very long time. Yep. You know, because be you're always to. worry with court cases, with, you know, all the legal shenanigans that can go on and so on, you always worry. So it was, had to make everybody in your department pretty happy when they were. Without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. And the, uh, I can't say enough for the Attorney General's office, uh, um, both back with Michael Briggs, mm -hmm. as well as during the Kelly A. I prosecuted that one, didn't she? Uh, yep, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah, she, I know she was very supportive of, uh, oh, of she the did department. A, she did a, definitely did a, she did a fantastic job along with the, the people that were with her mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah, because that would take a big team approach. Oh, yeah, but she, uh, she took the lead And on he's that still one. trying to finagle himself, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, well. You know, you read stuff, that yeah. stuff in the paper and it drives you crazy, you know? Well, the bottom line is when people hear about crime in Manchester, what they have to understand, it's a very few people. I know that. that perfect yeah. picture. Manchester is, is, is a good place. It's a great place. But, some, you yeah. know, don't you think about that sometimes people, when I, I in anger people a lot when I'll refer to the Bedford bubble, because I do perceive it as a little bit of a bubble. I mean, people kind of live here thinking we're this very special place that, you know, bad things don't happen. And bad yeah. things happen everywhere. 
But don't you think that not just the Bedford bubble, but some of the other little bubbles around Manchester, that it's easier for them to blame any of their problems on Manchester because Manchester's there? I mean, don't you think there's a little bit of that going on? Oh, I, I'm not, I don't know if I've had too much, too, too much, uh, if I've experienced too much of that. Yeah, Manchester is an urban area in, yeah. a, in a rural state for the most part. Yeah. There are other, Nashua mm -hmm. has a lot of the same issues that yes, Manchester has. Yeah. But Manchester is unique. Uh, what, its uniqueness also, it, 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 it draws people, it draws good people, mm -hmm. and it draws bad people. For yeah. instance, yeah. for instance, Manchester, if you, need a job, you don't have a car, you need, and you need transportation, mm -hmm. you, you go to Manchester. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing mm -hmm. for of people course. that want to support their families, but of also uh, it, it attracts other people for other reasons. Mm -hmm. um, Manchester is something that uh, we, we have over 400 and any given time, 430 sex offenders, registered sex offenders in Manchester. So that's something that as a police department, we stay right on. I bet. We, yeah. uh, we have to make sure that we stay on that. So. Um, People uh, that are mentally ill, mm -hmm. where do they come for services? They mm -hmm. come to the city, and they to come the to city. Manchester. Yeah. So, and, and, it's, and, and to me, and I, I say this publicly, to me it's a, it's a shame what, that there are not enough services out there for mentally ill people. And, I think uh, they're, I, they're trying to change some of that well, this year, aren't they, in the legislature? I think there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people working on that, but there, yeah. it, it, is, it is a shame that you don't, you don't see the support that uh, Mental illness is a sickness, and oh. sometimes it's not treated as such. Now, are so, those, would you say it's the mentally ill who are making up the, the major gist of those homeless that are in the city? Um, because I know that, you know, that obviously is, is a problem. I think what we're finding, we're, we're finding, we, that's another thing, Manchester, Manchester provides services. They, they do the, mm -hmm. the city government, the mm -hmm. social services, they all work together. They, Mm -hmm. They try to provide services for homeless. They try to yeah, provide services yeah. for people addicted to drugs. And some homeless, though, won't take the services, as we all know. But it, sometimes that could be a strength of Manchester. Sometimes you, it pulls people into yeah. Manchester. Yeah, true. Um, and it kind of can overburden yeah. the services that, that, that the city provides. But homeless, there's, there's a lot of the people you see walking around the street, they have mental illness, drug addiction or both, or some sort of uh, dependency, drug or alcohol dependency. And it's 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 a very difficult situation mm. because to, to get people with mental illness uh, to uh, to try to get off drugs or alcohol, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot more difficult. You I still have imagine. to treat the underlying illness. Mm -hmm. So, but that's that's some of the things that that y you experience in any city. So these these have to be some of the things that, I mean, for a city cop, it has to require more study and such than maybe in the towns because you're going to have so much more exposure. Just by again by virtue of the yeah, numbers. Just by just by just by you know yeah. By I mean, it doesn't mean because Manchester is worse than Bedford or well, any place else. It's just the numbers are bigger. Well, com Manchester is a. You compare Manchester to similarly sized cities. Mm -hmm. It is a safe city. It oh, is yeah, a good it place. Is, to, yeah. It is a good place to live. Yeah. And sometimes people, sometimes people um, might get the impression, oh, that with there's so many different people out in Manchester. There's. Uh, you hear a lot of talk about refugees and the, the, all, all the mm -hmm, controversy mm -hmm. that it brings up. Mm -hmm. What people need to know about uh, refugees are they're here legally. For a better life. They're, they're here for a better life. Yeah. They, they, were, they, didn't, they didn't pick Manchester. They were sent to Manchester. Yes, I know. Yeah. And they want the same things that we want. They and want and it makes sense for them to be the in the city because of the services that would be and available to them, obviously. That's right. And, but if you talk to some of these, you talk to some of the people, uh, there's some... You might talk to somebody, uh, a, a teenager, mm -hmm. that is Somalian, but never has even been to Somalia because they grew mm -hmm. up in a refugee camp in Kenya. Yeah. Or you talk to somebody uh, uh, from, from, from any given country that mm -hmm. they, these refugees are from, the tough circumstances that they came from. Mm -hmm. oh, you, how yeah. could you blame them? I know. Uh, I think what, what needs to be done is that uh, I think Manchester should not be the only community that carries the bulk of mm -hmm. Of that, mm -hmm. of no, having, I agree with have, you. Yeah. Having people for many come. reasons, not the least of which is well, even cost. Right, uh, it should be spread out more. And yeah, Manchester really has been kind of where everybody pushed it all into. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but uh, we're it's a very supportive city. They they've, mm -hmm. they've embraced uh, people. Manchester has always been a melting pot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, back when the mills. Oh yeah, so absolutely. This, and this is just and we grew up in melting pot cities. That, well, that's correct. That's what they were. So. You know, people coming from all over the world. You know, to better their lives and 
get a job where there were jobs available, and they built the cities. Well, we've come kind of to now through their blood, sweat, and tears, they built the cities. Right. Well, we've come to kind of a full circle because we started talking about community policing, but mm -hmm. and the challenges. But that is one of the challenges that we have as a police department is to police everybody. Mm -hmm. Is to be able to mm -hmm. is to be able to provide a police service to everybody uh, in, in refugees, and so it's a learning experience for us as well. Mm -hmm. People come from other countries, especially refugees. Mm -hmm. The police aren't really a welcome sight when you see a police officer walk up where they're from a lot of times. That's it's, true. So yeah. that's something that's that true. we we try yeah, to... Yeah, the police would, would be a source of fear for some of them, yeah. That's correct. Especially so that, when they came from these countries where there was all kinds of bad stuff happening to them. So that's why our officers have to, we, we do our best to learn about the different cultures. You almost need psychology degrees all year. You know, no, well, that's I mean. a, a police officer. Our, our men and women mm -hmm. out there, they do a little bit of everything. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, what a police officer is. Yeah. And arresting people is not a major part of what they do mm -hmm. in, in, at the time that they spend. Mm -hmm. A lot of time it is being maybe a social worker. Maybe mm -hmm. it is being a psychiatrist. Yeah. As again, uh, it, it, it could be helping somebody, pointing them to the right direction to get services. So. It seems as though you get, and I don't know, and maybe I'm naive, but it seems as though your department gets the appropriate support from your political factions over there in terms of funding and, and that kind of thing. Is that fair to say that? Or it's, do you have to go in and fight for everything all the time? No, it's the challenges that every community has right now with, with budgets. Hmm. Um, there's been a... Just to be able to, just to be able to, uh, every year, every year costs go up for the city without doing anything different. Oh well, yeah, that's true. Just for, yeah. just for city government to, to, to be able to fund mm -hmm. their city sure. services, sure. right out from the start, it, it's, it's millions of dollars more than it was the yeah. year before. So it's, yeah. a, it's a great challenge. I can tell you that with, with the mayor and with the uh, Board of Aldermen that I've dealt with for five years, mm -hmm. I've always got the sense that we will do everything we can for public safety. Mm -hmm. But you always have to, they have to fund other departments sure. as well, other city departments sure. as well. And you have to justify what you and want. If, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind if I went to city government in Manchester and I said, we need this, it's mm -hmm. imperative, mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling that they would. Uh, yeah, they seem to be, be supportive. With, with, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, I, so. in fact, and now I'll get, I'll get in trouble for this, and I don't even expect your comment on it, but um, they seem more supportive of the police in Manchester than I would say the political factions in Bedford seem supportive of our police department, I which, wouldn't. of course, is something that drives me wild. Um. I will. I really have no. Yeah, no, I, I so. don't expect you to. <laughs> you know, uh, the, those kind of little local political battles. No, you yeah. absolutely would not want to insert an opinion. <laughs> You have to live with all of them one way or another. But if you, you know, what would you say? Now, you, you've been at this for a lot of years, and you came up, you know, you went through every rank from patrolman all the way up to the top. What would you say if somebody, you know, if this was like the, the, your last day working for a police department and somebody said to you, Chief Mara, what is your absolute most takeaway memorable thing about being a cop all those years? What would you say? Um, being a police officer, well, I can talk about my circumstances in yeah. Manchester Police. You experience things with the people that you work with. Mm -hmm. I've been a police officer there for 26 years. Yeah. You've seen the uh, highs, the lows in people's life, joy, sadness, yeah. and you've experienced it together. That's what you take, uh, that's what I will take away from it. The brotherhood. It's brother, it's, brotherhood sells it short, in, in my yeah. opinion. It, yeah. it doesn't really cover it. It's just that You've, like I said, you've lived the bulk of your life mm -hmm. working, mm -hmm. working uh, with, with each other. You probably spent mm -hmm. a good portion, you probably spent more time with, with them than you have your family during and that span of time. Trip. So like I said, you experience things not only in your own life together, mm -hmm. but you also see the good and bad in people out in the street. Mm -hmm. So that is always going to be with me. And I think that's, it's probably like that everywhere. Hmm. That, that's Great what I answer. take away. So. I had a feeling you might say something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, believe it or not, look at the clock. We have zoomed through this. And, you know, everybody always thinks that we'll have a hard time filling an hour. And I know better because, you know, you get talking. Well, and I want to get one thing in, though. I, well, I, that's what I was going to turn it right over to you because I, I'm sure there are things you'd like to get across. You'd get so. mad at me if I didn't say this. I went, to, uh, I went to the Academy with Officer Spike. So we went to the Academy together. Officer Spike? Well, Bedford, for Bedford Police. You uh, did? Yes. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah. So, so you two go back that far? Oh, yeah. 
So he's wow. not in our door. So. Now, see, I had no idea what you were going to say when you said you had, you had to get this across. Well, Bob, uh, we, uh, we did I didn't know if back. I was going to get, like, these huge words of wisdom um, nope. that would be putting up on the stone wall out in front nope, of the police station uh, over there. Very good police officer, uh, school resource officer. The kids love him. Yeah. My kids, uh, yeah. My kids love him. He does yeah. a great job for Bedford. And you so actually went through it all together. We went to the State Academy together. Wow. So, wow. Wow. Well, you know, I always like to give my guests the last couple of minutes um, to say whatever it is you want to say. And that can be anything. It, it can be to, you know, support the local softball team. That's up to you. But, you know, look at the camera and Oh. Give the audience whatever message you'd like to give them. Well, uh, I'd probably say that uh, what happens in Manchester, it happens in Bedford, it happens mm -hmm. everywhere. Crime is crime, and the, uh, the best way to fight crime, the best way to, for us to be safe is to work together, community and police departments. So I, I think if uh, we do that, um, mm -hmm. Manchester, Bedford, Hillsborough County will be a safer place. And so uh, we, we just have to work in making our community safe. Mm -hmm. Be a part of it. Join a join a crime watch group. Uh, look out for your neighbor. If you know your neighbor's away, you see something suspicious, call the police. Mm -hmm. that, do things like that. It, it will make a difference. Um, most crimes are committed because of opportunity. You take that opportunity away. If people uh, go in somebody's neighborhood and they looks like they're up to no good, uh, and the police come, they know that's probably not a neighborhood mm -hmm. that they're they're going to go to again. So that's uh, that's what you need to do as a community is just stay together and just watch out for each other. Good advice. So, well, I'm glad you live in Bedford. Well, I uh, I like living in Bedford, and I, I love working. I love the city of Manchester. I know you I do. Love the city hey, yeah, of it has to tear you apart so, sometimes, huh? And well, I and I'm glad you came on the show because I knew you'd be great coming on here. And uh, Rich Gerard, I interviewed him last week. You know, the radio host Rich Gerard. Yeah. And I was asking him just kind of random questions, and he said you were one of the best interviews he ever did. He he so enjoyed interviewing you. And he thought you were one of the most. He thought you were the most honest person he had ever interviewed. Well, if I was his best interview, he's better get some more guests. On I this don't know. Rich <laughs> Gerard tells it like it is. That's why we get along with each other. So, you know, that's good enough for no, me. No, he's got a good, a good show. Good, yeah, good, good yeah. informative show. Yeah. So, well, enjoy. I have to thank you, and I hope we'll get you back again in the future. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. And anybody mm. in Bedford who did not already know Chief Mary, you got a good, intimate look at him today. And as I said. I'm glad he lives in Bedford because we need lots of residents just like him. Hope you enjoyed the show. Keep on watching. And until the next time, bye-bye.